Now that we know how to generate objects from AI, let's explore two more patterns, generating arrays and working with enums. For arrays, we'll build a Pokemon generator. You type in a Pokemon type like fire or water, and the AI generates a list of Pokemon for you. For enums, we'll create a sentiment classifier. It analyzes text and tells us if it's positive, negative, or neutral sentiment. Pretty useful for analyzing user feedback. Since the code is very similar to what we did with structured objects, I already have both examples ready. Let me walk you through how they work. Let's start with arrays. In the API folder, I've created a structured array folder. Let me show you the schema first. Here's what's happening. First, we define what a single Pokemon looks like. It is an object with name and abilities. Name is a string and abilities is an array of strings. But the key difference from our previous example is the UI schema. We directly wrap the Pokemon schema in z.array and this tells use object hook we're expecting an array of Pokemon. But first, let's look at the route handler. You can see we're still using stream object, but there's something new here. We are setting output property to array. When we generated objects in the previous example, we didn't specify any output type because object is the default value. But when you want arrays, you need to tell the AI SDK by setting output to array. Also, we pass the single Pokemon schema, not the array schema. The output type tells stream object to generate multiple instances of our schema. The Pokemon type itself comes directly from the request body, which we include as part of the prompt. Generate a list of five fire, water, or electric type Pokemon. We stream the response to the UI using result.toTextStream response. The UI is defined in the UI folder, structured array folder, page.tsx file. The pattern here is similar to objects. We use the same use object hook, but pointing to our new route, slash API, slash structured array. The schema also points to Pokemon UI schema. The difference is that we get back an array instead of a single object. So in the JSX, we map over object, we get hold of each Pokemon, render the name and the abilities. Since abilities is an array as well, we map over that too. Let me show you this in action. In the browser, navigate to slash UI slash structured array. Enter fire as the Pokemon type and hit submit. You get five fire type Pokemon with their abilities. Charmander with blaze and solar power, Vulpix with flash fire and three more. Try water or electric. And each time you get a properly structured array, which we can map over to display the Pokemon and their abilities. All right, now let's take a look at enums. And this works a bit differently. So in the API folder, I've created a structured enum folder with a route.ts file. First, you can notice that we are using generate object and not stream object. Enums is only available with generate object. We set output to enum and provide the possible values directly using the enum property, positive, negative, or neutral. No need for a separate schema. The next important difference to note here is that I'm using GPT 4.1 mini instead of nano. For enum outputs, the more capable models tend to be more consistent in generating the correct enum value. I found nano having problems trying to stick to the enum values, so make sure you remember to use the more capable model. Finally, notice we're using two JSON response and not two text stream response. Enums return a single value and there is no need for streaming. The UI is defined in UI folder, structured enum folder, page.tsx. The UI component is also quite different. Since we are not streaming, we don't use the use object hook. Instead, we use a regular fetch request and use state hook. We manage the input text, sentiment, which is the response from our AI, a loading flag, and error message. Analyze sentiment makes a fetch request to slash API slash structured enum, method post, content type, application, JSON, 
body, we send the input text. And once we get hold of the data, we set the sentiment as data to render in the UI. In the JSX, we display the error. If it's loading, we say analyzing sentiment. And if the sentiment exists, we render the sentiment as positive, negative, or neutral. We have the same form, layout, and structure. On submit, we call analyze sentiment. We have our div, our input, enter text to analyze, and a button to analyze that is disabled when loading. You can try this at slash UI slash structured enum, and you can enter the text amazing product. Press enter, and you get positive. Now try, this is terrible. This gives you negative, and finally, it's okay. This returns neutral. We're able to classify the sentiment in the text using OpenAI. All right, let me quickly summarize the key patterns here. Array schemas get wrapped in a Zod array and exported as a UI schema. Enums don't require a separate schema. Arrays use stream object with output type arrays and require a schema. Enums use generate object with a list of possible values instead of a schema. Arrays give you back an array of objects from use object. With enums, you manage it manually and don't require use object. All right, we've expanded our structured data toolkit. Arrays for multiple items and enums for classification. Combined with object generation from before, you can get any data structure you need from AI. I recommend playing with these examples. Try different Pokemon types, different text for sentiment analysis. See how the AI handles edge cases. It's a great way to get comfortable with Zod and see what these patterns can do. The code is on GitHub if you want to experiment.